you can leave it. Yeah. Well, first I want to thank Buneed for that very kind and generous introduction and much gratitude to SAM leadership for this award. Because this gala is Sam so brown and not Oscar so white, <laughs> uh, Shaquille has allowed me more than a minute to speak. <laughs> And while this award is humbling, it is, the real honor for me is to be part of the South Asian Network. SAN was the progressive Desi community I hungered for. One of like-minded folks I sought out in 1996 when I began as a volunteer. It has become a community filled with dear, dear friends, all of you here and dedicated activists, several doctors, lawyers, community and business leaders, a few judges, and even one verified genius, <laughs> all working for a better world, a just planet in which people who look like us can live safely without violence, can see a doctor when needed, and be part of the citizenry of their adopted homeland. Those who know me know I like to talk, but it is at SAN that I learn to listen, not just to board members and donors, but to staff and to our community members. I learned what it meant to go to the emergency room and not know what the medical staff was saying, how it felt to urgently need a cab ride before one's spouse caught up to you with his fists. What trafficking and modern day slavery look like in the soft, gentle eyes of a South Indian woman. There are so many folks I wanna thank, Shaquille and the wonderful staff and board of SAN for their tireless work. My sisters, Brithi and Sonali, leaders in their own right, whose support I've relied upon along with their husbands, Rakesh and Kapil. My wonderful daughters, Vaishali, who's here tonight, and Meghana, fierce young women who don't take shit, not even from their parents. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my husband, Shay, my financial compass, my editor-in-chief, my strongest supporter, and most able opponent in our daily battle of wits. <laughs> and of course, my mother and father, as well as Baba and Ai, who taught Shay and me what it is like to live, learn, and love. To honor and respect your partner, and also know how to push their buttons. <laughs> We lost Ai four weeks ago today. She and Baba were regular volunteers at SAN, working at our citizenship clinics, using their Hindi and Gujarati skills, few people sadly needed Marathi translation, <laughs> to help community members to naturalize. And after my own mother died almost a decade ago, Ai helped me to put on the saris that I wore at all the sand galas. Safety pins in hand, pleats perfected. Her absence weighs heavily on me tonight. And that's why I'm simply wearing a silver kameez. <laughs> Toni Morrison said, the function, the very serious function of racism is distraction. It keeps you from doing your work. It keeps you explaining over and over again your reason for being. I work at a pizzeria in Brooklyn. After picking up his pizza, a customer got very angry at me about a bag he said I stole. He began yelling at me, calling me an Indian bitch, and then came after me with a knife. I managed to close the door and call 911. That was totally unexpected from a customer. I feel so bad and felt like maybe I am Asian and that's why I had to go through those, that kind of incident. This is a direct quote, an incident reported to us at Stop AAPI Hate by a young Desi woman in New York. 
11,000 such incidents have been reported to stop AAPI hate since 2020. And sadly, 11,000 is just the tip of the iceberg. The Pew Research Center found that almost 45% of our community members have experienced hate. That is eight to 10 million individuals in the US. Cynthia Che, Russell Jung and I co-founded Stop AAPI Hate to better understand the problem. What we found is that anti-AAPI hate takes place over all 50 states and that hate is perpetrated most often against women and frequently against the elderly and youth. It includes harassment, discrimination, and sometimes physical assault. But the vast majority are not hate crimes and therefore require solutions beyond simply policing. There is not one solitary profile of perpetrators and unlike what you may have seen in mainstream media, most are not African American. And while the majority of victims are East Asian, our community, our South Asian community is not immune. The hate directed against Thaisis is not new in America. 200 South Asian men were beaten and driven out of Bellingham, Washington in 1907 by 500 white men. In the years that followed, newspapers across the West Coast warned of Hindu hordes and the dusky peril, like the yellow peril. The hate culminated in the enactment of the Asiatic Barred Zone Act of 1917, which prohibited individuals from most of Asia including South Asia from coming to the US. Under alien land laws in California and 12 other states, governments stole rightfully purchased land from thousands of immigrants, many hundred of whom 